I think we can all agree that collectively we have probably a bit of an issue with phone addiction, right? And well, certainly not all of it is bad and there's a lot of nuance to this topic. Many people, including myself, know these negative effects that come with it and, you know, want to cut down the time spent in front of our little pocket companions. So here's a research backed list of seven ways to fight our phone addiction. Let's get right into it. Number one, switch your phone to grayscale mode. So I originally heard this idea from a close friend of mine who's been using it for a while, but there's also some recent research that proves this trick to be pretty effective. A 2021 study, for example, the link as to everything else is in the description below, found that college students who did switch their phones to grayscale experienced a significant decrease in so-called problematic smartphone use, anxiety levels, and overall screen time compared to a control group. Essentially, the idea here is that turning your smartphone interface black and white makes it less inviting, so to speak, without colorful icons triggering dopamine, apps feel boring, so you're less tempted to scroll mindlessly. That is, of course, especially true for visual apps like TikTok and Instagram, which are also some of the most problematic in terms of doom scrolling, right? Number two, use a mindful lock screen message. There's this book called How to Break Up with Your Phone by science journalist Catherine Bryce. And in it, she, amongst many other strategies, shares the idea of creating a mindful lock screen message. So your wallpaper could be a mindful question or a reminder that interrupts your inner autopilot. For, for example, a message asking, what do you want to pay attention to? Or, you know, you can be pretty creative with that. The simple idea here is that every time you pick up your phone, you're essentially reminded why you probably should not have picked it up in the first place. Now, I have to say that I tried that years ago and, you know, I would use slightly cringe inspirational quotes as my wallpaper and, well, for me personally at least, it did not do too much as after a few weeks I wouldn't even notice the lock screen message anymore. But hey, it's, it's worth a try. And maybe the results are better when you regularly change the message and the colors and whatnot so that your brain doesn't get used to it, right? But that's just my thoughts here, so take it with a grain of salt. Number three, just do something else. Okay, this might sound obvious, but it really is a big one. Just try to incorporate different real world activities outside of using your phone into your everyday life. Because too often we grab our phones really out of boredom or habit. So having your day filled with alternatives that you genuinely enjoy reduces your phone usage quite naturally. And that could be anything, reading a book, exercising, trying a new hobby, meeting up with friends, or spending time outdoor, out, outdoor, outdoors my Austrian accent. I, for example, recently made an effort to rediscover my reading habit and I enjoyed it quite a lot. In fact, so much so that I created a second YouTube channel where I talk about the one thing I learned from books I'm reading. If you're interested, I would love if you check it out. Link is somewhere up here or in the description below. But back to this video. In terms of combating phone addiction by filling your day with other activities, the science especially points in the direction of exercise. There's this relatively big study that suggests that introduction of moderate exercise a few times a week significantly reduced the screen time of adolescents. And that's because obviously you decrease the time of being sedentary and thus naturally reduce the opportunities for mobile phone use. But also exercise increases self-esteem and also reduces anxiety and depression, which all can be triggers for phone addiction. And very interestingly, the study also suggests that long-term exercise may influence similar neurological pathways in the brain as mobile phone use and would somehow um, regulate the urge to use your phone in a natural way. Number four, identify and manage your triggers. Very often, phone addiction isn't just about the phone. It's about what triggers you to use it. You can try it out yourself. Just try to take note of moments you instinctively reach for your device. Is it when you're bored, stressed, lonely or anxious maybe? So once you pinpoint these triggers, you can find healthier ways to respond to them. For instance, if boredom Mystic the cue, read a book or listen to a podcast as an alternative. Or if, if stress is a trigger, perhaps try a breathing exercise or something like that. And the whole concept is backed by psychology. Studies have found that using your phone as an emotional uh, crutch, so to speak, 
to avoid unpleasant feelings is indeed linked to smartphone addiction. So by addressing underlying feelings rather than escaping straight into your phone, you can go to the root cause of compulsive usage. Tackling that might, for example, involve stress management techniques, meditation or proper therapy. Or simply allowing yourself to feel a bit of boredom without immediately grabbing the phone and, you know, therefore retraining your brain to not always seek um, digital distraction when you feel uneasy. All right, number five, ride out the urge. Next time you feel the urge to unlock your phone for no important reason, try to acknowledge that urge, but don't act on it. Instead of instantly unlocking your screen, pause, take a deep breath, notice the itch to check Instagram, TikTok or email or whatever, and simply observe it like a wave that will crest and fade. That's a behavioral technique that's also used for fighting many other addictions like smoking, for example. The idea is to become aware of the urge to check your phone without immediately giving in and thus creating a sort of mindful space where you can consciously choose your response and somewhat break that automatic reflex to mindlessly checking your phone every few minutes. And with time you should learn how the urge eventually does fade. And apparently you can further strengthen that ability to ride out the urge by doing additional mindfulness practices like meditation, breath work and whatnot. Number six, create physical distance from your phone. This one is a bit of an obvious one, but out of sight, out of mind, is indeed a good strategy to fight smartphone addiction. Physical separation can dramatically reduce the mental pull of your phone. So there is this big study, for example, uh, which was done by the University of Texas a couple of years ago, that found that students performed much, much better on focus tasks when their phones were in another room versus directly on the desk, even if the phones were silenced. So having your device within reach unconsciously reduces your attention as part of your brain constantly fights the urge to reach for your phone. So what you can do, for example, is creating phone-free uh, times or phone-free spaces, like creating a three-hour phone-free uh, time window for studying or deep work while your phone, I don't know, charges in the, in the next room, or declaring the dining table as a phone-free zone in order to cultivate good conversations with your loved ones. And of course, this goes a little bit without saying, ideally your bed and bedroom should be phone free as well, as especially checking your phone last thing before falling asleep and first thing in the morning has been proven to be bad for you, for your sleep, obviously, uh, by really many studies at this point. So that's that. But I have to be honest that for me personally, this is a real challenge still, and it's certainly something I need to take to heart much more. And now number seven. Use technical controls to your advantage. Last but not least, let's talk about some technical strategies right inside your phone. Of course, you can use your phone's built-in screen time tracker or third-party apps that monitor and limit your daily use. That confronts you with the raw numbers of your phone usage and, you know, that can be a bit of a wake-up call, really. So as a next step, the screen time tracker within iOS, for example, Let's say set up daily app time caps and thus enforce breaks, which kind of follows the idea of writing out the urge we talked about earlier. However, in my experience, those caps are too easily um, avoided or bypassed. So yeah, I think that for me at least, it's a bad idea to break the cycle before I'm even unlocking my phone. What does work better in my opinion is gamification. For example, one study noted that focus apps like Forest, for example, where you virtually plant trees for periods of not leaving the app and therefore not being able to use your phone significantly reduced phone usage. Um, by making it fun and even competitive if you challenge friends and see who's able to plant more trees, you replace the habit of checking your phone with the reward of uh, winning the game, which does build healthier patterns. Of course, there's also the good old switching off notifications, but that may not be the best strategy as a recent study showed. In fact, they found that there was no significant drop in phone use after a week of disabled notifications and even noted a spike in users' FOMO, so fear of missing out, which exactly matches my own experience. I've tried out Apple's focus mode and found myself unlocking the phone even more, 
because in the back of my head I had always this idea that I would miss something really important due to the focus mode, right? So maybe one of the other strategies we talked about might be a better way to go. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and perhaps you learned something new. If you liked it, please leave a comment below, like, subscribe and yeah, thanks again. Have a great day. Cheers.